my friends. Hello, hello, hello. Emilio, are you there? <laughs> Emilio, what hello. a nice, what a nice shirt you have. Ah, uh, you like it? Wow, but uh, you are supposed to be in Boston, not in Miami. I, <laughs> I am in Boston. That's true, but. You know, yesterday I, I met here a, a colleague from Kenya and she brought me this special gift, which is a traditional, uh, you know, shirt from Kenya. And ah. I, I promised to wear it in the, in the, the happy hour episode. Of course, I'm very, I'm very jealous. I'm very yeah. jealous. Yeah. I'm very jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you, my friend? Uh, what time is there? It's uh, one o'clock. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, very nice, very nice. We miss so, you here. I have to tell you, we miss you very much. Uh, I know. I, I, I also miss you. I also miss to be there. Uh, anyway, anyway, uh, someone has to work, right? <laughs> 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 oh, listen. So, um, Sebi told you told you that uh, he's no he has no video, no microphone this time, so he can we cannot say. Uh, hello to him. Anyway, uh, Nisa is already here. We have a uh, uh, um, so tell about the uh, the uh, question of the week. Do you know the question of the week? Yes, of course. But we aren't we going to see it on online as usually? Yes, yes. So Sebi, launch the <laughs> the question of the week, and that's the following: How many? Infectious skin diseases can be diagnosed with the help of thermoscopy. Three, you think three, seven, ten, more than ten. What do you think, Emilio? Three is a nice answer. I like it. Three. 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 Or you, yeah, yeah. The, pro the problem is that I can think of more than three. More than three, yeah. 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 In 1997, uh, 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 we knew one. <laughs> but now let's see let's see how many we know let's see how many uh yes more than 10 for four four for 36 out of 82 uh, respondents okay yes that's true more than 10 right it's by yeah, far should, more than 10 should it's be even far. more than 20 yes and that's definitely the topic of uh, the 22nd episode today today's epi today's episode infectious skin diseases emilio infections yeah 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 infections do, we do like we... infections very much very yes. much parasites yes. viruses bacteria all these living organisms our friends yes. usually yes. Yes. our our friends living with us Yes, yes. Exactly. yes. so uh Sebi, can you uh launch the um, the uh paper of the Bene. the paper of the week the paper of the week is the following let me show you the paper of the week and that, that's the paper of the week do you like it emilio Wow, which is this journal, by the way? Uh, the journal is Dermatology, Practical and Conceptual. So wow. the journal of the IDS, the International Demoscopy Society, official journal, and where basically there is a lot of space for demoscopy uh, research and papers in general. And this is a very nice uh, update, a review paper written by Vincenzo Piccolo. Uh, he is uh, working, working in my clinic. Uh, he's a very, uh, very, uh, very good friend of mine and also a very an incredible researcher. And he uh, uh, put together what we know today about infections and dermoscopy. So basically, we, we know a lot. Of course, we, uh, we just have to have a long list of, of diseases that can be uh, diagnosed with the help of dermoscopy, but starting by infestations, we have many. And that's the queen of infestations. Hello, Costas. Mm -hmm. Hello, Nisa. Hi. Nice to see you. Hello, hello. Great to be hello, here. Hello. Hello, hello. As always. I, I want to give you a taste from Boston since ah, you're you dearly missed. Ah, yeah. You are in the lobby in the, yeah, at the Congress. Very exactly, good. Exactly, exactly. Very good. 
Uh, Nisa, are you are you at home or at the Congress? I am at the Congress also, but now I'm in the hotel room. <laughs> ah, perfetto, perfetto. So let's go back to the infestations. What is the which one is the queen? The queen is scabies. Eh? Scabies is the queen. We know already since uh, more than 20 years that um, the use of the thermoscopy facilitates the diagnosis of scabies. Uh, it's not the case anymore that we do scrapings. It's not the case anymore that we do um, uh, therapy uh, diagnosis ex adjuvantibus, meaning we suspect the, 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 the disease and we give the treatment. If the itching is going away, then it was scabies. If, if the, the itching is worsening, that's what, that's what this, the, the patient had no scabies, you know? And this is the way we did until the introduction of thermoscopy. Of and course, this, we need, this is the first dermatoscopic pattern that initiated your passion for dermoscopy, yeah? Exactly, exactly, exactly. This is by far the, my first paper uh, on, on dermoscopy yeah. published on a, in an international journal. This is how you fell in love with dermoscopy. Yes, exactly. Uh, by the way, this was Seriously, my... this is your first paper? Yes. yes, this was my first paper. Yeah. Wow. In Archives of Dermatology, 1997. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, incredible. By the way, I have always to uh, give a gra uh, credit to Jürgen Kreusch, who was the inventor of this application of dermoscopy. Eh? because he was writing just a couple of lines of this uh, uh, application in one of his papers. And then I read the paper. I was getting, uh, you know, uh, curious about the stuff. And then we, did, we performed a formal study. Anyway, uh, the jet with contrail, that's the sign, the metaphoric <laughs> sign uh, for diagnosing scabies. You see the jet, which is the anterior part of the mite. Uh, and then you, you see the contrail, which is the burrow that the mite is excavating within the southern corneum. Eh? Here you see how beautiful uh, is a scabies in a, in, a, in a child. Of course, in a child, it's a little bit easier to make diagnosis of scabies, but still, it can be challenging clinically, dermoscopically, not anymore. Of course, we have to train a little bit our eye in order to be able to catch this little uh, sign that it's visible through the, through the dermatoscope. And then, continuing the, the, the travel um, uh, through infestations, we have many other nice animals living on, on our skin that can be seen uh, much more easily with the help of dermoscopy. Phtiriasis is pubis, you see the guy eh, doing exercises, uh, you know, uh, with the help of our uh, pubic hairs. And then Ixodex, Miasis, Pediculus. <laughs> Uh, um, uh, usually we don't perform diagnosis of uh, pediculus capitis by seeing the animal because the animal is very fast, it's going away, eh? it's running away while uh, uh, the eggs, eh? the meats are there and we can see them and we can make the diagnosis. And here you see how beautiful you can see also the difference between the empty meats, which is this one, for example, and the, the full meat, which is this one and this one. And eh? so this question, is okay. JP, in the yeah. chat says, before you go to the next one yeah. uh, concerning scabies, does the dark triangle, this brown triangle mean that the parasite is in? Exactly. The other, yes. The, exactly. This yeah. is the anterior part of the body of the parasite. Exactly. The mite is there and therefore we need to perform treatment. Yeah. There is also a very nice animal that I never saw in, in, in person. Eh? Still, I miss him because this is a tropical disease, which I never saw in person. And this is Niasis. And look how nice is the guy. He is uh, saying hello with his hands. The chow chai, chow chow sign. Look at the guy. You know, you see, he's coming out and saying chow chow, chow chow, chow chow. <laughs> Oh, nice. you, eh? you never met in person, eh? you never. No, I never met in person. <laughs> never shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, a couple of times, by the way, I met in person this other guy, Tunga Penetrans. Eh? Yeah. Yes, I met him or her a couple of times. And uh, it, this is also very peculiar morphology that we can see them throughout the microscope. You see that the animal is uh, a big one. You know, you see all, all this is the animal. Eh? And this is the, uh, I suppose, the bowel of the animal. The dark uh, comma sign is the bowel of the, of the animal. Eh? Tungiasis. And then what's this? What, what's that? This is another, uh, uh, another animal that we can see more frequently. And this is larva migrants. Of course, also clinically, we can suspect uh, strongly the diagnosis, but with the help of thermoscopy, uh, we can diagnose this disease much easier. And then, let, then let's go fast through the bacterial, viral, and fungal infections that we can um, diagnose throughout the microscopes. Here, uh, a beautiful example of lupus vulgaris, yeah? tuberculosis, eh? with the orange color and the sharply focused vessels that are, let's say, typically seen in granulomatous skin diseases, uh, which include, of course, also sarcoidosis, uh, foreign body uh, reaction, leishmaniasis, and so on. Uh, so this is not uh, peculiar for lupus vulgaris, but we know that we have to make a biopsy here. Eh? This is a very nice also uh, kind of disease. We also can diagnose it clearly clinically, but with the help of thermoscopy, it's easier. It's a little bit disgusting, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is trichomycosis. Eh? Yeah, but this is very easy to treat, eh? the easiest to treat. Yes, that's very, very easy. Yeah, of course, you can shave uh, the hairs and give, uh, uh, well, it's, uh, it's called trichomycosis, but this is a bacterial infection and it's easy to treat. And it's especially seen at the axilla. And you see this kind of white uh, scales around, around the hairs. Okay, of course, this is also very, very, uh, uh, very, very uh, popular sign. And this is what we can see demoscopically in molluscum contagiosum. Eh? This kind of amorphous clots, eh? um, this kind of uh, 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 fuzzy clots uh, that you can see in the center and uh, with this kind of uh, 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 vessels which are usually not crossing the, the center of the, of, the, of the lesion, okay? Molluscum. This is also a very nice uh, application, the, wor the world of, uh, of, of words, eh? plain words, uh, as is the case here, by, uh, vulgar words or condylomas, all these kind of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, words can be easily diagnosed. Look how nice is the, uh, this mosaic that, we, that can be seen in, in plain words. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this is the most interesting one, plain words, meaning that yeah. the common, the classic common word is quite easy to recognize anyhow. And since this is a nodular exophytic lesion, also the criteria are quite evident. Yeah. But yeah. this one is much more tricky because it's flat. It's not, it's hardly seen uh, with a naked eye. And dermatoscopically, we see these very small, tiny yes. dotted vessels yeah. with a quite symmetric distribution. Yeah. Very yeah. geometric, very geometric distribution of the of the vessels, yeah, yeah. But look how nice is the difference between a callus and a viral wart. Look at this, eh? two lesions, which are clinically, I mean, uh, of course you, you have to think about it, but dermoscopically clear cut. Eh? In, the, in viral warts, usually you see splinter hemorrhages, while in, uh, in callus, you never see splinter hemorrhages. Eh? And this is a very, uh, a very useful uh, differential diagnosis. Uh, now we go to a very nice new application, which is the world of fungal infections, especially tinea capitis. And tinea capitis is much easier to diagnose with the use of the microscope. Of course, we need to, to make a scraping of the uh, and make a microscopic examination. 
because we need uh, a confirmation. We need to give uh, to a child a treatment with bisofulvin for many months. So we need a confirmation, but still we can strongly suspect uh, a tinea capitis here because of the presence of coma vessels, but especially because of this- uh, Coma hairs, coma hairs, not vessels, coma hairs. Uh, coma hairs, sorry. <laughs> Come my hairs, and, uh, and, and but especially this uh, barcode sign. You know that in some way the the the, the remaining part of the of the hair is vanishing in some way, is losing the pigment in some of the uh, of the uh, uh, segments of the hair shaft, and therefore this could be very very suspicious here. But Rabbi, why do you say that uh, you consider that always we should confirm it with a with a mycological exam? Well, because it's easy. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. you don't need to make a, a let's say, a difficult a, a biopsy or whatever. You just scrape a little bit, hydrosip, uh, 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 you, you put the hydrosip um, uh, de potassium. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean that, in my view, the pattern you showed earlier and also here, but even earlier, even more. It's very specific for for uh, yes. tinea capitis. So the diagnosis is quite almost sure. The only problem, which is yet not uh, adequately uh, investigated, is if we could trust dermoscopy in order to confirm the uh, the uh, successful treatment. So yes. when you apply your treatment, then you check with your dermatoscope, and if you don't see signs anymore, you can be sure that the, that the, the tinea is over. This yes. is this remains to be a little bit better elucidated. But from a diagnostic perspective. I think that I mean it's quite the, the the pattern you showed before is quite specific, quite yes. strong. Yeah, no, I completely true, completely true. But you know, I'm doing a a, a fight uh, to convince uh, our our dermatologists, that at least the ones I I meet in in in, co in conventions and the courses, to go back to the microscopic examination for fungal infections because nobody. No dermatologists or very limited number of dermatologists are, are doing it. And in my view, this is extremely nice uh, uh, to, to keep back, uh, let's say, this kind of examination. So we need to buy just an optical microscope and it's very easy. We get confirmation. But of course, I agree, not, not too much for this kind of cases, but especially for tinea corporis, where sometimes it's, it's not so easy uh, to uh, to be convinced about the uh, about the diagnosis, or also or also because because of onychomycosis, which could be much more difficult. Onychomycosis, in some way, please remember, it's much less frequent than uh, suspected by people, by patients, and by clinicians. Eh? It's very rare. <laughs> so very often, it's, it, it is just a traumatized. Um, uh, micro traumatized uh, uh, um, uh, onico, uh, onicopathy. Uh, but if you see this kind of sign, which is uh, this kind of yellow to whitish uh, lines in some way, then getting into uh, the, the nail and reaching uh, the, 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 the proximal end of the, of the nail plate, then it could be onychomycosis. Here, a very nice uh, paper by Piracini, Bianca Maria Piracini, which uh, was who was described, uh, was describing basically this kind of pattern. On the left side, it's, it's onychomycosis. On the right side is traumatic onycholysis. Eh? And the, here you don't see anymore the fingers, but you see that it's just sharp. The difference between normal uh, a normal nail and uh, and um, and um, pathologic nail is sharp. You know. Here another case. I know that you know already the diagnosis, eh? probably. But this yes. is easier with thermoscopy. I met this guy just once or twice, and this is tinea nigra. It's nice, eh? Tinea nigra. Eh? It's a it's a it's a disease which is which is of course um, in the differential diagnosis of melanoma and 
uh, and other pigmentations of the nail. So that's basically what I wanted to share with you. But uh, what about uh, what about you, Emilio? Do you have some additional cases? Yeah, yeah I just have a couple of cases that are, uh, let's say, uh, in line with what you said, and maybe a couple of additional things that you didn't uh, you didn't show. So let me share my screen. It will be quite uh, fast. So let's start with uh, this one here, which of course is something that you showed, but look at it, I like it so much. Uh, yes. So what, does it, it, what does it remind to you? It's a, he's a fixed guy. He's, he's, a play, he's a exercising in a gym. Yeah. No, 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 it's something, something better. Let's establish a new metaphoric term today. Ah, All together, okay. in agreement. Okay. Because we don't have enough. We don't have enough. Huh? <laughs> yeah, the ski sign. The huh? ski sign. <laughs> <laughs> I can buy it. Yes, yes, yeah. I like it. I like it. The ski sign. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. No, no, the, the lice is wonderful. And also, I very frequently show a wonderful slide by Pedro Zaballos, our, our colleague, which follows in the, in the next slide. And this is so funny, come on. <laughs> Before lunch, after lunch. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, That's really wonderful. But look, I mean, we can practically see the skeleton of the parasite. Eh? Yeah, Everything. Yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So this is concerning lice. That's something interesting in my view and not so well known and not so well investigated. This is uh, an eruption that, of course, could correspond to an inflammatory uh, eruption such as uh, dermatitis or even psoriasis. Uh, but in fact, this is uh, also from the close up. It's not really informative, but this is a case of tinea corporis. Mm. And uh, here we have a couple of, of uh, uh, clues that have been recently described. Maybe the most important one is this one. Uh, so the fact that the, the desquamation follows a direction from in to out. And this corresponds perfectly to the way that the, that the fungus uh, uh, expands. It expands from the center to the periphery. That's why the peripheral scales are somehow intact from the outer part and they are destroyed from the inner part. Yes. Uh, and this is a nice sign for tinea corporis. Another example of, uh, of tinea corporis uh, due to microsporon, and this I like, I also like it very much because here at the periphery mainly, we can see, what can we see at the periphery? Yellow crusts. Yellow yeah. crusts correspond to an eczematous reaction. And this is the case, of course, in microsporia. We know it that uh, in microsporia, there is very frequently an inflammatory reaction, eczematous practically reaction, which is highlighted here at the periphery. And if you look in the center of the lesion, you can see that the hairs are broken, yeah. which is, again, a sign for tinea. So broken hairs and eczematous reaction at the periphery. Then... Yeah, one more, uh, one more example of something that you showed at the beginning, the most famous application of dermoscopy for infections. But here, I would like to highlight the following. So look at this eruption. It's quite widespread. Clinically, it's not so informative. In my view, we can, it looks like a kind of, um, of uh, pruraigo. 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 Mm -hmm. So it could be anything. And in fact, even if we look from the close-up and even if we look dermatoscopically, for instance, here, we don't see anything. We just see the crusts, the hematogenous crusts. But if we look with our dermatoscope a little bit, uh, a little, a little bit in, the, uh, in other anatomic sites and other sites and other sites and other sites, then eventually, if there is the mite, we are going to detect it. And this is really important because we know pretty well that in healthy individuals, it's uh, when we get infected by, by scabies, we don't have on our trunk more than three, four, or five mites maximum, which yes. means that it could be possible that you, that you don't find it if you go to, to scrap uh, blindly. While with your dermatoscope, you can, uh, you can screen, you can scan all the skin, and practically, if there is a mite, you, you're going to find it. 
So here, if you do your scrapping uh, from the left part of the skin, you, it will be negative. You have to do your scrapping from the, precisely from the point where the, where the mite is. So that's why I think that uh, dermoscopy is better than, than scrapping uh, for diagnosing uh, scabies. And of course, one more case you also showed in children with a characteristic location on the palms and the soles, diagnosis is really uh, straightforward. And I think that this is my last case. Another example like the one you showed of H, of, of the most difficult to diagnose HPV uh, infection in my view, which is the plain wart. Look here, the criteria also clinically are not so evident and, all, and dermatoscopically too. The vessels are tiny, uh, tiny dots. Uh, they are not like the vessels of common warts, which are much, much bigger. Sometimes they are almost hairpin or if not hairpin, coiled. Here, no. Here, the vessels are tiny dots uh, with a regular distribution uh, all over the surface of the lesion. And here is uh, an, a, a, a bigger magnification of the image that we can see these tiny dotted vessels distributed uh, all over the surface of the lesion. Okay, that was it uh, from my side. And uh, I don't know if we have something in the chat or in the, there is a question about Demodex, JP. Can we diagnose Demodex? Demodex, yeah. Demodex, uh, these kind of um, tales of the, dem of the Demodex were, were described. Uh, let me tell you, until now, I, 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 I was not able to, to check if this is, uh, let's say, uh, relevant in the clinic. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you? Well, the, the demodex uh, on the face, uh, demo, the, demo, the, what's the name? The demo, the cidosis. Yeah, is potentially visible with our dermatoscope. So we can see this protruding white masses protruding out of the hair follicle. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it, it can be it can be recognized with the dermatoscope. Of course, the question is uh, that uh, when you recognize the demodex tails, if this is enough to confirm a pathologic uh, uh, presence of the demodex mite, because we know that the demodex mites anyhow might be present on our skin. But uh, yes, we can we can see them dermatoscopically much better as compared to the naked eye. That's mm -hmm. for sure. There is a question by Giovanni, uh, a comment saying that uh, in Tinea, uh, frequently we see pustules located on the board of the lesion. Sounds reasonable because pustules might appear in, in the course of a tinea uh, occasionally. Can you please explain, JP, again, the barcode sign? Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You want to show the image once again? Yes, then... yes. Let's, let's go to the image because this is extremely relevant in my view. Well, uh, is that me... Morse code sign, JP? Barcode it's... sign and Morse code sign is the same? It's, it, yeah. Yeah, so what I mean is basically, uh, let me maybe, let me um, uh, magnify a little bit. Uh, okay, uh, can you see my mouse? Uh, but yes. it's not moving. It's not moving. It is, it is. Yeah, so can this, see. Is it's terminal here. this is a terminal here. And as you can see, the pigmentation of the, of the hair is missing, you know, in some of the segments, of the hair. That's the, basically the barcode sign. And you can see this in many of, the, of these hairs. Um, uh, and the fact that uh, the, the hair is then becoming coma-like, it's because it's, it's, it's tending to broken, you know, because the, the, the spores are invading completely and killing completely uh, eating the, the 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 hair and then the hair is going to be broken uh, in the uh, uh, and that's why it's becoming coma like you see here is another yeah. uh, uh, terminal hair which is which is going to be broken that's it basically very good very good so i don't see any other questions or comments in the chat so uh, if not then sebastiano will uh, show us which is the next thing we are doing in Dermoscopy Happy Hour right now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Nisa! Yes. Nisa from Boston too. We are all in Boston, JP. Today the show is uh, something like, you know, 
Yeah. Something like the live reportage. <laughs> 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 Reporters from Boston. Yes. The yes. Could be happy yes. on. So, yes. Nisa selected a, a case or a couple of cases from yes. uh, Dermatoscopy Facebook group. Nisa. Yeah, I, I shared that. Can you see it? Can you see the screen? Not yet. Sure. Uh, Not yet. I, Not yet. yet. So, I, I cannot. I can. Really? <laughs> That's really strange. Yeah. Sabine. Sabino. Now, okay. Oh, there okay. you go. There now you yes. go. Now, yes. Now, yes. Uh, where, where's my slides? <laughs> it, it doesn't appear. Maybe we can sp skip me and I'm going to try. Sure. Uh, just, just, uh, just unshare your screen. So stop sharing, stop sharing, and then do it again. Okay. And probably it's going to work. If Stop you have here. your slides. Okay. Uh, try once again to, to, uh, to share. And if it doesn't work, we will uh, go to the next. Uh, I think uh, let's go to the next because. Uh, okay, let's go to the next. What is the next, Sebastiano? What is the next? The next <laughs> is Eudermoscopy. Beautiful. Costas, what did you bring us? So I will take you a little bit away from the infections world uh, because I actually want to show how active uh, the Eudermoscopy Live is turning. These are three cases that were uploaded yesterday and the day before yesterday, and they already have a plurality of answers. It's, it's very active, it's very live, and we all want you to participate because it's a very fun and entertaining way of learning and at the same time seeing what other uh, dermoscopists think. Show so us, I'll... Show us. Okay. Uh -huh. So I put I put two cases from Australia because I don't know about you. Whenever I see a case from Australia, I, I just vote for melanoma. <laughs> you're fifty percent likely to get it. You know. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Like my diagnosis melanoma without even looking at the most. <laughs> okay. So this is the clinical, uh, seventy-two-year-old female, um, on the upper limb, and this is the dermoscopy. Hmm. I personally see. Definitely doubted vessels, maybe some coiled. Uh, but there is this pigmentation here, which I, I don't know whether it belongs to the lesion or to the extreme sun damage of uh, the background. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I, I agree. Dotted vessels, and usually you see, you know, when, when, when we see dotted vessels on a, on a skin like this, we have to be, to be cautious and uh, thinking about either a squamous cell kind of lesion or or melanoma i would say that another possibility here uh, would be uh, lichen planus like keratosis so many of lesions like this one will be eventually lichen planus like keratosis but yeah this is the differential mm -hmm. diagnosis so melanoma lplk and yeah okay bowen's disease of course but uh, the absence of scales is a point against bowen's disease so and let's see what uh, people think Already 44 answers in uh, 24 hours. Um, so melanoma, only 6%. Uh -huh. BCC, 22%. And SCC, 70%. So most people think along these lines. I was, I was impressed, I was impressed with the very small uh, percentage of melanomas, to be honest. Um, for basal cell, to be honest, I don't see a lot of clues. I don't yeah. know if you Beige. do. Strange. Yeah, definitely, because I mean, there are no erosions at all. And this no erosions. is not really in line with PCC. But still, it's nice because nobody was voting for a benign lesion, right? <laughs> Indeed. Like, everyone would do a biopsy, and I think that's the point here. The so next lesion, also from Australia, 60 year old, upper limb, and female. Mm hmm. Hmm. Very also similar. an interesting, peculiar lesion. Very similar to the previous similar. one. Yeah. yeah. Nisa, would you like to describe what you uh, see? 
the, the, the Constantinos, I couldn't uh, look at your case because I'm trying to <laughs> with the slides. Okay, okay. So okay. then, uh -huh. Professor Lalas. Yeah. Here, there are also, I think, uh, a few shiny structures visible yes. in the image, which make the overall aspect a little bit more suspicious. Other than this, again, dotted vessels, again, absence of scales, absence of erosions as, as before. So same differential diagnosis with more probabilities for melanoma as compared to the previous one in my view. I totally agree. And I also think that in this case, this pigmentation belongs to the lesion in, in contrast to the previous one, that it was more diffuse background. So yeah, I'm, I also voted for melanoma here, Zeppi. Yeah, definitely. It's, this is more, more suspicious for melanoma. Yeah. In and fact, 25. Yeah. Yeah, 25% vote for melanoma, but again, SCC is the predominant diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And the last case is one from Canada, also uploaded yesterday. Beautiful case. Wow. I loved, I loved the dermoscopy of it. And on this case, we also have um, pathology. So who would, would you like to describe the vessels, Jeppe? Yeah, this is a beautiful glomerular, let's say, now we call them coiled. Uh, so this is an exaggeration of the Bowen's disease uh, type of vessels, but, 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 well, there is well, another well. kind of lesion we have <laughs> to consider, and that's the friend of Emilio, that is Poroma. Eh? <laughs> so I agree, I, I also saw double coiled vessels here as, as they're typical in Poroma, however, the histopathology yeah. showed yeah. SEC. No, no, but I have, uh, you know, a collection of poromas that I often show uh, mimicking perfectly anything you can imagine. And this is a great image because I have a poroma in this collection, which is, I mean, identical to what you see here, <laughs> really identical. <laughs> I, I think the clinical here is more suggestive, yeah, to be yeah, honest. Of course, of course. It's an ulcerated nodule. So either it's a BCC or SEC or even even worse. I'm a yeah. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Wonderful. So those were my my three cents. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wonderful. Beautiful. Wonderful. Our dear Niza, are you ready? Do you think? Yes, I'm ready. I think <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So Beautiful. please go, go ahead, share your screen. By the way, we have many cases sent by the participants yes. this time. I don't know how many we will be able to show, but okay. Uh, let's see first Nisa's um, selected cases from the Dermatoscopy Facebook group. Here we are. Is it okay, Emilio? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Uh, I cannot make full screen. Huh. Okay, it's okay yes, now. Okay. Okay, now, so. uh, we have a patient and he is seven years old. The lesion is located on the back. It's a solitary lesion and history is two months. And you see a Meyerson phenomenon around the lesion. Mm -hmm. So I prescribe topical corticosteroid and antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Very well done. <laughs> and one week later, here is the macro images. Now oh, the eczema disappeared. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but the lesion but is what's, there. <laughs> what's that what's left? The, 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 I have no idea. Uh -huh. And the slides. Ah, but now we lost your slides, you know. Eh? Yeah. Okay, now. I, I, yeah, I don't okay. know. What's, okay. I can't ch change. There's a problem with my yeah. computer, maybe. Yeah. And. How can I go to the <laughs> next slide? It doesn't move. Just, just click on the screen. Oh. Click on the screen. Click on the screen. Yeah. And now move. Yeah. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Constantinos. And here is the dermatoscopy. What do you think it is? Hmm. Hmm. Well, first, first, uh, first hypothesis is pyogenic granuloma. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bleeding nodular. Uh, 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 it's Yes, I know. I know. But still, uh, of course, the, the other possibility is uh, a typical speech tumor. Yeah. Uh, Seven-year-old, right? Seven-year-old. Meyerson phenomenon is quite common uh, around nevus or yes. sometimes melanoma. So it's very logical to think about speech nevus. Yeah. Uh, and there are some vessels, so it doesn't look like pyogenic granuloma, right? And yes. let's have a look at the answers of the forum. 
Consultants, I'm clicking, but <laughs> doesn't Move work. To, use your arrow to the right. <laughs> arrow. Click on your computer. Great. And start answers. Um, mostly, uh, some people consider pyogenic granuloma, wart, spitz nevus, and molluscum contagiosum also. Is it possible? Yeah. An irritated molluscum. A Not irritated bad. molluscum go, is go, go also back. nice. Yeah. yeah. Go, go back. Giant. The most difficult thing right now, Constantinos, go back and go forward. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just, just use. Okay. That's okay. okay. Perfect. So let's go to next case. <laughs> what, what, was, what was it? What was the diagnosis, though? Well, molluscum contagiosum. A molluscum. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Yeah, ah, very, very nice. there are some white clots uh, on the upper side, but uh, I also consider it could be a spitz news. That's why I would like yeah, to express it. Yeah, because it's a nodular lesion and never follow up nodular lesions. And why, if it's a molluscum contagiosum, why there is a solitary lesion in that patient? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very unusual localization, lumbosacral area. So spitz news was very plausible for me. Uh, and uh, when I excised the lesion uh, and histopathology came, molluscum contagiosum, of course I was uh, very happy and a little bit surprised also because I didn't expect that. <laughs> okay, now this patient is also very interesting. Uh, he has a liver transplantation history six years ago and he is now under tacrolimus mycophonidat mofetil combination therapy. And here is the skull, and the lesion is this one, solitary lesion again. Uh, it was so beautiful, but <laughs> can't move. Clinically, uh, clinically, I would say basal cell carcinoma is the first option. That yeah, comes and to. maybe basal squamous carcinoma yes, also, because there are some keratin on the surface. The borders fits with the basal cell carcinoma. Mm -hmm. uh, but why it doesn't move? It's so strange. I it never happened to me. <laughs> Don't worry. This 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 happens in the live shows, especially when you are outside. I mean, yeah, especially when you are in Boston. <laughs> especially when you are in Boston. Don't worry. <laughs> and Just, here is the okay, yeah, okay, okay. 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 So we have uh, white structureless areas. We have keratin crust in the center, and at the periphery we have some serpentine and branched vessels. So again, I think basal cell carcinoma or basal squamous carcinoma fits with our clinical diagnosis. Yeah. And yeah. Basal, squamous, basal squamous is also an answer yeah. in the chat by, by some participants. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and when I ask this question uh, to the forum, everybody consider uh, same differential diagnosis. In this case, <laughs> what's the matter? <laughs> It's, I'm try so so sorry. Don't worry, don't worry. Try to click. Yeah. Huh. It's okay. Ah, here we are. Here we are. Is it okay? No. No, maybe because I saw the uh, an arrow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying with arrow, but it doesn't move even with the arrow. Probably your computer needs to be restarted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the, the comments of the of the yeah. here we are. We are the first diagnosis BCC basal squamous carcinoma, well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma, and atypical fibroxanthoma. All possible, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, but none of them. None of them was the correct answer, right? Eh? Yeah. None, none of them. Histopathology is very beautiful. <laughs> Ah, so was it what? Leismania. Leismania. And here wow. uh, you, you see the answers. I covered all the names of the uh, yeah. forum members. Yes, yes. Yeah. There's yeah. one on the upper side. Uh, rest in peace, my dear friend Teona. Uh, she uh, yeah. regularly makes comments in the forum. And when I look at the comments, uh, I was so sensitive with her comment. Yeah. And it's open here now. Yeah. Yeah. And here are the answers again. All similar BCC, basal squamous carcinoma. Yeah. There were lots of answers. And here is the histopathology. 
uh, you can see uh, here a granulomatous infiltrate involving the whole dermis. But we have also in the macrophage histiocytes, and you can see the MSD goats yes. in the center. Yeah. Uh, so this was uh, Leishmaniasis. Very nice. And probably the parakeratosis uh, lead to do, uh, these white structures areas. And the um, dense uh, granulomatose infiltrate leads to the, indeed, you can see orange structures areas at the periphery. And here also, there are some clues uh, for a granulomatose infiltrate here. Uh, so it's very interesting. And the patient uh, indeed has an immunosuppression. Uh, so a cancer uh, was so plausible for this patient. Uh, <clears throat> I would like to share with you. <laughs> Very nice case, beautiful, wonderful, beautiful. wonderful Thank case. You. There are also comments in the chat saying that it was a very great case. Also, there is a question by Katrina: How can I access the Facebook forum for the next week? Well, the Facebook forum you can access it at any time. You just have to uh, apply to become a member if you are not, and then the administrator, which is in front of you now on our screen, will will accept you, uh, and uh, and then you will uh, you you will you will be able to access the forum at any time. Great. So great. Very Thank nice. you very much, Nisa and Constantina. Thank you, Nisa. I thank you. <laughs> Great cases. So let, uh, let's now move to another uh, very important part of the show, which is yes. to show uh, the we, cases sent by the participants. But yes, because when, we have many, we have many in the waiting in the waiting list. We yeah. have many, yeah. and every but, time we show the cases sent by the participants, as you know, we begin with a special participant which is not simply a participant, but she is also a part of the show. She is, I would say, uh, she belongs to the team. And today, yeah. the surprise is that Penelope did not only send us her usual gift, but she's also here to present it live. Hi, Penelope. Hi, Pascal. Ciao, Penelope. We don't hear you for the moment. Uh, it's, it's a very difficult quiz. I got four. Ah, <laughs> four. Here, here we, we are. are. Yes. Ciao. Hello. Ciao, uh, ciao. <laughs> are you in Boston? No. No, I am in France. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At home. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you for your contribution. How, how can it be so, possible you see so many strange cases? Well, um, I work a lot. <laughs> it's, I, I'm, a, I'm a private, of an independent uh, dermatologist, okay. and uh, I have a lot of consultation, and uh, I, uh, I take a lot of photos every day, so um, I see a lot of things. Great. But yeah. you do have also, uh, Pascal, you also have yes. an artistic vein, it's not only... I mean, yes, uh, because I, I think a dermatoscopy, if I want to, to highlight um, a dermatoscopy, um, I, and I want uh, uh, people to, to see what uh, the, the clues are. So you have to 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 show uh, nice photos if you want sure. to understand. Sure. We thank you so much. It's always wonderful. This moment of the show is always wonderful when we, we show you. what you send us. So now today that we have the honor and joy that you are here with us live, I will just click and you will be able to, uh, you, you should, you can, Speak, you can present. Of course, uh, uh, first question. First challenge, yeah. Yes, uh, re uh, related to the previous episode. So the first case, uh, you see this uh, blue lesion uh, on the outer edge of the foot. Okay. The so second let, one, yes. Let's let's try to, let's try to guess. Uh, yes, guess. try to guess. No, not, so. not really hard when I you know, see okay. a, a straight first one, first one, blue nevus. Yes. Second no problem. One. Second one, non-pigmented lesion with uh, uh, dotted vessels on uh, the uh, plantar heart. So yeah, yeah, very, very, very hard. Uh, there is a, very, a very white, hard and very rare. Very, it's a white line around. Maybe it could be poroma, or it could yes. be pyogenic granuloma, or it could be yes. anything worrisome. So very difficult. Three. Oh. Three, it's even oh, worse. It's, it's even worse. It could be a word. Yeah. <laughs> could be. Yeah, could be. Uh, 
Alberto Uh, I'm sending you a case of acral lesion. We listened found on the 29 year old Asian woman. Pathology, knee, nevo melanocytico composto, so compound, compound nevus, congenital type with uh, melanophages. And uh, this is the image, which is uh, okay, acceptable for yeah. the diagnosis of a nevus, a classic parallel, uh, parallel faro. Yeah, I would say rather parallel faro pattern. Uh, so everything is okay, I would say, in line with uh, histopathology. Dear professors, this is another acral lesion recently found in a 56-year-old man. Six months ago appeared, not enlarging. The patient referred bleeding in that site after trauma. Oh, uh, that's a very nice one. Very nice one. It's a very distal lesion. Yeah. yeah. And... What is the conclusion? And what is the conclusion? Word. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I didn't. Just bleeding. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Could be a word or could be a. Biogenic to granuloma. Biogenic granuloma. It yeah. must be excised, of course. Katrina Fernandez, uh, okay, male, 40 years old. Uh, his wife. Thinks there have been changes in nevus localized on the chest, no personal history, no other history. On physical examination, nevus globular, uh, some reticular nevi on the chest and abdomen. 
in the chest left side, asymmetrical reticular globular nimbus, nine millimeters. <laughs> like brown, uh, areas, uh, hypopigmented structureless areas, <laughs> differential diagnosis, nevus or slow growing melanoma. Three months follow up versus excision. So here we are. That's the lesion clinically. This is the lesion dermatoscopically. Interesting lesion, I would say. Mm. Yeah. Slow growing melanoma. Yeah. Uh, so there is a mainly a reticular pattern. Uh, by the way, uh, I can also see within the holes of the network pigmented dots, uh, and uh, which could be a sign for congenital type uh, reticular nevus. But what is going on in the lower part is uh, somehow annoying, I would say. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, definitely. It, it, it seems like it's starting to grow some negative network on uh, like a negative network, exactly. Se se seven o'clock. Exactly. That's, so that's so combining, both, combining both, I would think about the possibility of nevus associated melanoma. So yeah. congenital type maybe nevus and the melanoma developing on the lower part. That would yeah, be. And Reasonable and that's a comment. So negative network is usually shared with nevi, uh, with melanoma arising in the nevus. So this is exactly. definitely something to keep in mind. Exactly, exactly. Very good. Then uh, again, a long text. Uh, Forty-five years old. Total body photography. Uh, history of uh, ultraviolet exposure. Uh, in the back center, there is symmetrical globular nevus, five millimeter in diameter with brown focal areas of hyperpigmentation, presence of peripheral globules. Uh, because the presence of peripheral globules in 97% of the cases related to a benign lesion, should I follow up or perform an excision? Um, I'm concerned about the history, which is the age, by the way, ah, 45. 45. Okay. 45, and that's the lesion uh, here in the red circle. And this is, uh, this is dermoscopy. Uh, here, I would say that in contrast to the previous one, I don't see anything particularly worrisome. Yeah, uh, classic, classic globular nevus. So, yeah, with some globules at the periphery. Maybe. Still, the lesion is quite is quite uh, different from the rest of the lesions. If you go back to the clinical, uh, this is a lesion which is uh, in some way standing up. Yeah. Yeah, um, and apart from that, at least it, it's darker. Yeah. Yeah, it is darker. And if you go on the dermoscopy. I will actually disagree with you on, on this. This one, personally, I would excise for, because at 9, 10 o'clock, you see tiered globules. So globules in a line. Uh, at least that's what I see. So tiered globules usually is indicative of spindle cells. Um, so I would personally excise this one. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, this is not a lesion to follow. So in my view, either one has to be sure that it's a benign lesion phys with physical examination or it's better to excise it. That's it's in principle, you know, in my view. So let's vote. I vote excision. Zeppi? Me too. Me three, <laughs> Pascal, Niza, four, Emilios. Oh, I keep it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So then... Alion. Oh, again, we have a long text. Uh, okay. Uh, from Kyrgyzstan, by the way. Huh? Wow. 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 Uh, I want to present the case on Scalperi of 33 year old female patient, which appeared two months ago. Uh, advice to use antifungal cream and shampoo. Initially, on dry dermoscope examination, the lesion is well defined with regular borders, mostly blah, blah, blah. I thought about annular erythema or some doctors propose combined uh, nevus. Is there any possibility you help me with the diagnosis? Okay, let's see what we can see. Uh, it's a nevus on the scalp. I think the dermatoscopic image is not perfect, but I think that I can see an eclipse pattern that with the peripheral pigmentation and the hypopigmentation in the center. So again, here, uh, uh, from the what I see, I would not worry. Yeah. But, uh, how old is the patient? 33. 33. Well, but it's a congenital type of, uh, of nevus, so everything is in line. We all agree? We all agree, and I think that if the dermoscopy was a little bit better, I think that we would see some yellow globules. You know, it has some balance uh, cell type differentiation. You know, I instinctively feel it. Yeah. Looks like a or coquette news. 
Yes, yes, okay. Okay, so I think that we should stop here with the cases from uh, uh, from the audience. Uh, we have some more, but we will see them uh, in the next episode because it's already, we already completed one hour and we still have to play Kahoot. Kahoot. We still and, have to play Kahoot. Ready for Kahoot and ready for giving the, the prize. What is the prize? The prize is the access to, to what, Sebi? Sebastiano, show us. Hello, Emilio. Hello, Jeppy. Welcome to the Dermoscopy Excellence Digital Training. Let's start from the clinical. Are you ready for the scalp? Some data highlighting a significantly worse survival for acral melanoma. Here, again, you make the diagnosis because of the arborizing vessels, sharply in focus. So, this is our destiny, my friends. If someone is connecting right now, yes. then they are saying, okay, let's stop seeing this stupid course. <laughs> <laughs> but then, if you look at the tables and you see, you see the reason why. Melanoma on the face is a lazy guy. Morphologically, dermatoscopically. <laughs> Bravo, my president. Eh? The winner today wins a free registration for this and also a kiss from JP like the one he gave me on the... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, there we go, there we go, share. And uh, four, five, six, eight, seven, seven, five. This is the... Please, piece. please, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Connect, connect. Here we are, here we are. People are coming. People are coming very fast. Wow, look at this. By the way, I have to tell you the story of this weekend. I've been, uh, because I, I, I forgot to tell you before while speaking with uh, about Tinia, I, I've been to a veterina veterinary congress to speak about infectious diseases and dermoscopy in humans, because there is a group of, uh, of uh, doctors for cats and dogs, special, specialized in, uh, in cats and dogs, uh, who are using dermoscopy for diagnosing infectious diseases in, diseases in dogs and, and cats. And they're very good, they're very good. And uh, we were sharing our common experiences and uh, I learned a lot. Yeah, yeah, Do you have yeah. any publication? I would love to see the presentation. Yes, there are some. A few things there are. There are some. There are some. Uh, they, they are basically as we were at the beginning of our history, uh, back uh, uh, 25 years ago, with uh, very few uh, publications in the field of demoscopy, but still, they have about 20 publications right now. And, yeah, there uh, are. Yeah, I, I know because I also participate in a PhD of a, of a, of a young uh, guy who is working on an infectious diseases in, on the ears of the pigs. Uh -huh. with, and we are trying to see with dermoscopy if you can uh, detect early the, uh, the vascular problems. Uh, it's very interesting. Definitely, definitely. Okay, uh, I think we that start? we should yeah. start. Uh, Go ahead. Let's go. Episode 22. Here we are. Here we are. Monday case. Monday case. <clears throat> okay. Do you like it clinically? Yes. Okay. Very good. Do you like it also dermatoscopically? Yes. Okay. I see it a little bit blurred, but uh, still. Ah, it's a little bit blurred, eh? Yeah. Uh, Really, eh? more than usually. Or more than usually. usually. More than usually. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's related to the to the laptop that I use today in contrast to the computer oh. that I use. Oh, it, it now cleared up for a second. I think it's the connection. It's the I connection. Know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. But it, this, it's the same for all the participants, so it's fair because they all see the image either good or blurred. So it's uh, <laughs> true. True. It's, 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 it's fair. I understand. <laughs> So let's see the options. The options are nevus, melanoma, basal cell carcinoma, or lichenoid keratosis. Uh, so I'm quite confident that the correct answer will win here. Yes. 
even if the image is blurred, still I'm confident. Yes. 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 Basal cell carcinoma. Of course, this was the correct answer, and the majority of the participants found the correct answer. And here we have Mustafa leading. Mustafa. And Kezia again in, uh, in position number two, which brings us to the Tuesday case. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you like it? Uh, we like it a lot. Seborrhea yeah. keratosis? Do you buy it for seborrhea keratosis? Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. You want to? You don't want to take the risk, huh? You don't <laughs> want to take the risk. Okay. So, do you think that this is a nevus, a, a, a spitz nevus, a congenital nevus, a melanoacanthoma or a melanoma? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, of course, theoretically, there could be an alternative here. Yeah. But the main answer is of course melanoma, which is the correct answer. Theoretically, the alternative option could be a pigmented Me spitz nevus in a child. Uh, yeah, but anyhow, the lesion was quite uh, ugly. So uh, melanoma, of course, uh, which brings molluscum. <laughs> molluscum, first place. <laughs> molluscum in the first place. Okay, let's go to Wednesday. This is a really tough lesion, I have to admit. Uh, hardly seen uh, clinically. There is just a grayish, you know, uh, coloration. And this is dermoscopy. I don't know how well you can see it. If it's blurred, it will blurred. be a disaster because, <laughs> because here the criteria are very, very subtle. Uh, so let's take uh, a look at the options, mm -hmm. which are Lentigo maligna, lichenoid keratosis, pigmented actinic keratosis, or basal cell carcinoma. Uh, difficult one. Very difficult it is, one. It is, it is a difficult one. And uh, also it is a, a category of lesions for which uh, I can tell it now because the voting is over. It's a category of lesions for which we have said that even the inverse approach is not working uh, well because... Uh, it will be false positive very, very often. So lichenoid keratosis. Uh, of course, there were, there were many uh, gray dots. In fact, in some uh, foci of the lesion, there were clear-cut remnants of pigment network, which I guess are not well visible in this small image. Uh, so these remnants of pigment network that correspond to solar lendigo and the gray uh, granules uh, combined are... Uh, suggestive of lichenoid keratosis, but on the face, as we said many times, LPLK uh, cannot be safely uh, discriminated from early lentigo maligna, even with the inverse approach. Uh, this brings in the first place Kimira. This is a brand new name. This Kimira, is a brand new name. Kimira. Kimira, okay. And uh, we have two more. Thursday case. Uh, clinically and ugly looking dermatoscopically and yeah I mean you, you know uh, sometimes I'm good <laughs> <laughs> so Rarely. melanoma atypical nevus dysplastic nevus or unstable nevus unstable unstable shaking nevus <laughs> skiing nevus <laughs> Yes, we are, we are laughing, but uh, there is a, an entity uh, invented in Australia, Unstable Lentaico. But that's why I included it. Yeah. That's why I included it, Unstable Lentaico. Okay, that was obviously a very easy one. And uh, we, we have still Chimera in the first place, and this brings us to the last case of, the, of uh, today's Kahoot, which clinically is... Uh, this one, darkly pigmented, and dermatoscopically, this is what we get. Uh -huh. And here, let's see the options. This is the case where the game will be... Nivus, melanoma, melanoma, basal cell carcinoma. 
By the way, there is also yeah. small angioma. Did well, you see the angioma? Instead of basal carcinoma, why do, don't you ask for poroma? poroma. <laughs> yes, of course I could. But of course, this is just the nevus as correctly uh, identified by 91 participants. Uh, uh, and you were correct. And now let's see. And first place for today, Kimira. 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 Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations, Kimira. Fourth and fifth. Uh, very good. Very good. Let's see if Kimira can join us for a moment. And... Uh, so we can congratulate face to face. Here. In the meanwhile, uh, we thank very, 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 very much our panel, uh, our our standard collaborators. This is not; these are not invited guests. These are part of the game, part of the show, part of the team. Uh, Niza Constantinos and Penelope. We thank also all the <laughs> participants. We apologize for the problems, the technical problems that we had today, but we did our best, given that we are not. Uh, at home. Um, what else, JP? Well, yeah, basically that's all. That's all. Uh, we are waiting for you for the next episode. We have to think about the next. Ah, uh, Kimira is here. Kimira is here. Yes, I suppose so. so the real name of Kimira is Joanna Grotza, possibly. Uh, Kimira, are you with us? If you can, uh, oh, Anna, can you unmute yourself? Unmute yourself or start your camera. Uh, or maybe there is some kind of problem. Anyhow, congratulations. Yeah. And uh, we hope that you will enjoy your prize. And um, yeah. What else? Next That's Sunday. Ragazzi, thank you for joining Next us. Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hope to see you soon. Uh, come back safe. Enjoy Thank your you congress. So Thank you so much. Drepi. Ciao ragazzi. Mm. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.